For all recipe notifications, click on this bell icon and never miss a video from Get Curried. A Christmas celebration is never complete without a rich rum fruit and nut cake. I'm Tarika and today on Get Curried, I'm going to show you that it's possible to make a rich Christmas cake without months of soaking the dry fruits in rum. For this recipe, we need 450 grams of a range of dried fruits. To this pan, I'm going to add the chopped up raisins, cranberry, kiwi. I've got some candied ginger, which is really my favorite. And of course, some candied cherry. I've got some tutti frutti here, but I'm not going to add that right now to the pan. We'll add it later to the batter. Now to this lovely mixture of dry fruits, I'm going to add 80 grams of flavorless oil. A quarter cup of water. Two tablespoons of dark rum. The sugar I've got for this recipe is some gurshakar or powdered jaggery. Now because we're in India, I really like using this native ingredient. But if you can't find gurshakar, does not mean that you can't bake this cake. Just substitute this 70 grams or half a cup of gurshakar with a soft brown sugar. Now this is just about to get even more flavorsome because I'm going to add the zest and juice of a lemon and orange. Add the orange zest in. Time for the lemon juice now. Now I'm going to add some fresh orange juice. It makes all the difference to this recipe. Now just give all of this a good mix. Now while this is simmering, you have to keep stirring it with a spatula so that nothing burns in this pan. Three minutes are up. It's time for me to turn this off and just take this off the heat and let it cool down. This will take about half an hour, but we have other things to do in the meantime. While the dry fruit mixture cools down, the most important thing in this recipe is to get the cake pan ready. Now, this is a cake that bakes for two hours in the oven. So we have to ensure that the pan is nicely insulated, making sure that the cake does not burn. So there are various levels and layers of parchment paper and foil that go into this. I'm going to show you the first layer that goes at the bottom of the cake pan. Very simple. Nothing complicated. That's the first a cake pan which has a removable bottom for this cake. Now it's important to use a cake pan with a removable bottom for this cake because it helps you right in the end. Now that's the second layer. You can tell I don't have much patience. So I try to take tiny little shortcuts wherever I can. Now I'm going to grease this with some butter on the sides of the pan and now I'm going to add what I like to call the fence. Parchment paper really acting as a fence here. Now this is really really important at this stage here and it needs to be this tall. Just greasing the parchment paper also from the sides because this is where I'm going to add little bit of it for continuity and just sticking that on okay so that's done now the last really important part of the recipe is to insulate the cake pan from the outside so i'm going to add a layer of foil this recipe needs a little bit of art and craft not a lot of art actually more crafty than artsy I'm just going to scrunch it up from the sides, just making sure that it doesn't come off from the pan. That's enough craft for one recipe. The pan is absolutely ready, so we're going to go back to mixing the cake. Now is the part of the recipe that I like to call Operation Assembly. 
So we're going to work on the dry ingredients. I have 120 grams of plain all-purpose flour. Now to this, I'm going to add 40 grams of almond meal, almond flour, powdered almonds, without skin. Whatever you like to call it, that's what you need to get into this bowl. Half a teaspoon of baking powder, this is very important. A quarter teaspoon of salt. Now this is a spice mixture that I've made by grinding up some cinnamon, cloves and dry ginger powder or what we like to call salt in India. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of this. Now a very important ingredient in this cake is some nutmeg. I usually just like to grate up a little bit of it and add it. I'm just going to mix all of this together. Okay, that's it. I'm putting this aside. The dry fruit mixture has cooled down. Now I'm going to add 50 grams of walnuts that have been chopped up. Now the tutti frutti that we didn't add to the mixture earlier. Just give that a good mix. Now I'm going to add two eggs, but just one at a time. Crack them into a separate bowl. So add the first egg once it's been whisked. Give that a mix. Add the next egg. And now very gently, just mix all of this together. Now add the dry ingredients. Just sift it through. Now just mix it through. Add the flour in small batches. Don't add it all in one go. Just makes it easier to mix it into the batter and give us a really good lump-free cake. the next batch in. Once you've made sure that there are no floury bits left in this batter that you can see, that's it. There's really nothing more left to do. You have to pour it into the prepared cake pan. Now with a spatula, just level this out. Now this is a fairly easy batter to level out because it's quite thick. So it's easy to just level it out. And just one tiny little thing before it goes into the oven is to just decorate this with some blanched almonds. I've removed the skins and this is going to be a very rustic decoration for this. Just go all around the cake. And I'm going to pop this into the oven for two hours at 150 degrees Celsius. Keep an eye on this cake. Keep checking it from time to time just to see that it's not burning. The cake is done. Mine took less than two hours this time. Usually it takes that much time. But today it took about one and a half hours. It's absolutely done. Now the first thing you need to do immediately as soon as the cake is out of the oven is take the skewer and just very quickly pierce some holes in the cake. I've got two tablespoons of dark rum that I'm just going to pour into these crevices, these holes that I've just pierced into the cake. And now almost immediately, what I've got here is a wet tea towel. I'm just going to take this and cover the cake, wrap it up completely and leave it like this to cool completely. The cake has cooled completely, so now it's time to unmold it. I'm going to take off all the layers that we had wrapped around it. Open up the spring foam pan. Ideally, you should bake this cake at least a day before Christmas and just allow it to mature. When you're storing this cake, 
wrap it with cling film and store it at room temperature you can leave it out that's absolutely fine but it's important to keep it completely wrapped up otherwise it tends to dry out you can of course give it another feed give it some more rum or orange juice or whatever you like but whatever you do i hope you have a really wonderful christmas celebration like this video share it with your friends and of course subscribe to get curried